Hey everybody, Cal here, bringing you some more Duelist. So today I have yet another really close epic game to show you. It was actually against somebody who's on my friends list who I ran into while I was laddering. Um, and the game was, I think, really, really, really sweet. The deck I used in it, I believe, is a new Vanar list. It's not... I don't really think it's anything special. Um, I Tomorrow's episode is going to be me doing a Let's Try Vanar episode, finally, where we're just going to play Vanar. I'm going to go over the list, and we'll play it online a little bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into the replay, and I'll see you guys there. Here we go. We are currently in the match, of course. Um, so this is kind of a... I was under the impression that it was like a tempo Vanar, but I but I was told by Coco Loco that it feels more like a really like a really control Vanar. Um, I don't know too much about Vanar. I just uh, was doing some research and the deck seemed really cool. It feels a lot like kind of like playing a blue from Magic the Gathering. Um, I'm still in silver. I've basically taken. Um, I mean, I'm not doing bad this season. Um, I just keep getting I keep getting screwed by the fact that since it only remembers it only remembers the last ten matches. Whenever there's a replay that I want to do for an episode, I basically am stuck either waiting until I have a chance to commentate it um, to be able to even ladder, or you know what I'm saying? There's just there's not much I can do. Um, now this my plan was to switch it and then chromatic cold it, but I forgot about the whole opening gambit thing. <laughs> where the opening gambit triggers te technically before the minion enters the battlefield, so the heart sister doesn't land on the mana sphere and then switch. She switches and then lands. So um, that was a big mistake uh, because now he has this 3-5 that I can't do anything about, and I have a 3-2 that's just going to die. And the reason why it's taking me a while here to do anything was because I, was, I had a friend sitting with me who I was showing the Vanar deck to, uh, and I was kind of explaining to him what just happened, and we were having a good laugh about it. Um, <laughs> uh, so now I wasn't too sure what to do. Uh, this is probably a bad placement, because now his guy can walk down and provoke everything. Um, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck, is we, I run two aspects of the mountains, and this gets so much value. It doesn't seem like people expect it too much, either that or... I mean, it is an AoE, so it's not particularly particularly easy to just play around that happening. But a very, very cool and fun card, for sure. Man. I really, really love this game. And so it's hard for me, as much as I get ladder anxiety, when I haven't been able to play for a long time, it's really hard for me to, like... To, you know, I'm saying something, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I want to play Duelist. It's like, now I'm commentating this, I'm just so excited to think that I'm finally going to be able to start laddering again. See, what I should have probably done here is had the Dream Geezer go, like, over here somewhere. Um, so that way... Ooh. I forgot about this. He clears my board, but at least his minion now is really only worth three damage. Of course I'm gonna kill it. I'm provoked. There's nothing else I can do. Uh, I am taking a lot of damage, so I'm gonna have to heal up. And also getting a 4-4 on the battlefield isn't too bad. And if he does kill this, hopefully we can get it back with the Keeper, because as of right now it's the best thing we can get. Usually with the Keeper, you really want to try to get like the Fenrir you know, the 3-3 three, three that makes a 3-3 three, three when it dies. I, I think it's called a Fenrir or something. Um, or a Valnir or something like that. That's, like, the best thing to get from the Keepers in this deck. Other than Archon Spellbinders. Because Archon Spellbinders are in this deck. Can... No, I don't think it can. Oh, Arclight Regalia is such a ridiculous card. Um, it's something that I definitely think could use some changing. Um, just because when you, when you think about it, just equipping the Arclight Regalia um, is like removing multiple minions from your opponent because your opposing general can't really break it. You know what I'm saying? I, just, I don't know. I think I think it blocking two damage is fantastic, but I think it raising the attack... I mean, if it gives you plus one attack, I think that might be okay. I just think the plus two attack and the blocking is a little too much because if you think about it, like, you know, all he did was equip an artifact and he's basically... Causing me to waste spells and all kinds of crazy stuff. 
So I was able to break it, but you know, I don't know. I, I, I could just be me having a hard time. I don't know. Arclight Regalia. You guys can talk about it in the comments. I'm completely open to conversation. It's not like with the Songhai episode. I don't want people to get like just mad. You know, I, I want to talk about it. Um, so if you guys want to have any input on what you think about Arclight Regalia, let me know. There it is. So what's this guy called? Fenrir. Yeah, Fenrir Warmaster. I was thinking of the Sons of Svanir from uh, um, Guild Wars 2. Another one. My gosh. This is just crazy. Crazy time. Honestly, I, I, I feel like... I don't know. Because even though he has no board at the moment... I mean, I barely have a board anyways. But it's like there's so much tempo and power swing just from having that artifact. I think it's a little too much. And that's definitely unfortunate. And he hit the mana crystal, so now we're stuck with six mana. We could cast the um, uh, Archon Spellbinder, which is good for two reasons. I mean, one, obviously, it can damage his Regalia. And two, if he is forced to martyrdom it, um, we'll basically get double our health, and we'll go back to 18. So it's not it's not horrible. Granted, we don't want it to get martyrdom because it's the only card we have. But if it does die, there's a chance our keeper will get it back next turn. So not horrible. I think Blades is also a pretty solid card, to be honest. For a common, for a common, this card is pretty sweet. I ran it for a while when I first started, um, and I know there are some lists. That, I mean, obviously, like this line are that still run it. So this is left alive, luckily. I was trying to figure out here if it was better to minion control or attack the regalia, and I decided I probably should be killing his minions. I believe I kill this. If not, this is probably the right answer. Heal up a little bit more, throw out a Fenrir. This is probably a bad place to put it, since it's really easy for him to holy immolation right here if he does choose to do so. Because uh, he can just walk up, hit it, and then holy immolation and totally wipe out this Fenrir. Um, I probably should have played it over here to at least force him to have to play a 4 mana cost minion in order to do a Holy Immolation if he wanted to. And it's a little more defensive at the moment. I really want to try to force him to walk over into a place where it's my favor, not his. Arclight Sentinel, another card I didn't expect. Um, so that was a lot of tempo on his side. And then the second Arclight Regalia. Oh god, it's so hard to deal with. This I did um, for some reason. I was mainly just trying to get more tempo here. Um, the walls were because I wasn't sure what else to do. <laughs> um, this deck at the time of me playing it and to this day since I've been able to play too much is still really new to me. I think in total I've maybe played 
six games with it, um, and I've never really played Vanar at all before then, so uh, you probably will have to bear with me tomorrow when we do the Let's Try Vanar episode, because I'm not going to be amazing, I guarantee. The uh, Now, the deck list, some of the, when I was looking up deck lists, people, uh, at, at least the deck I really liked, um... Was running is running two blazing spines, blazing spines. That's another thing. What is your guys' opinion on this card? I think it's okay. Synergize is cool with Hearth Sister because you can teleport things over next to the walls and kill them with the walls. Um, you can turn the walls into um, seismic elementals, which is pretty tricky to do sometimes. Um, I've done things where I've used the Hearth Sister to teleport a wall into the middle of enemies and then and then evolve and then evolved it and then transformed it, which is pretty cool. It is an eight mana combo, but it's not too hard to get to eight mana. Yeah, I don't know. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I should have the ability to get a, at least a little bit, you know, more orbs soon. I have to be careful with, I have to be careful with my money. I'm paying off a lot of stuff. I have medical. Um, you know, Again, just in case you guys didn't know, like I'm out of work at the moment. I'm on disability, so I really got to make sure I'm using my money carefully and for the right things. <laughs> um, but I should be able to get a, a couple orbs to maybe craft some cards that I don't have in case you guys uh, see something that I should do. Here, I was thinking of just dropping in a minion and then uh, immediately evolving it. I keep saying evolving. What is this? Pokemon? All of a sudden. Um, and I, th I think that was okay to do, um, because I really need to try to rest board control back. And since I can't break these regalias, it's just crazy sauce. Um, however, I did at least this five five. Like the whole reason why I even made this five five was because I knew it was ba it was screwed. It was just gonna die to him. But at least it could damage the regalia, and that's the whole thing. Um, is that they can stack, and it makes them a little ridiculous. Um, I also am really happy to have Twilight Sorcerers back. I mean, obviously, I took them out of the Magmar deck, but in this deck they're really cool, because all the spells are super valuable, except for, except for the walls. And even, like, the Crow Genesis, I mean, I really like this spell, I wouldn't get rid of it, but sometimes you don't really want to draw this, you know what I'm saying? Because we only have three Vesser minions, I believe, in the deck. I think it's just these three Crystal Cloakers, which is usually fine. It's usually a good five mana tempo. You do th you blow up one of their minions and then you drop down basically a four three. Usually, um, you can usually kind of control them enough to make them back up. This isn't a great example of how the deck works, sadly. Now I was a little surprised with this Tempest, uh, but I guess he just you know obviously wants to kill as many things as he can without taking damage to his regalia, which makes sense. Oh, never mind. He killed the elemental. I think, I think Lionar... I don't remember exactly why the reason he was, but there were some people that were talking about how they don't necessarily feel like Lionar is super strong. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think Lionar is pretty cool at the moment. I think they're good. Now that's what I want, the only problem is, again, it doesn't really do too much. Um, I was able to do, what, one damage to him with that? <laughs> uh, the main reason why I even did that was because, again, I need to break these, but my health is so low at the moment that I have to play the rest of my turns out very carefully. There's not, you know, I can't make any mistakes, especially since um, on 9 mana he can do Iron Cliff Holy Immolation, which like right here, for instance, would be super ridiculous. Um, and he hasn't used any holy emos yet, so I have to assume he has at least two, right? Not necessarily in his hand, but I, I can't, I know some people don't like to run three, um, I don't know why, but I have heard some people don't run three, maybe because they're epics, um, and people don't feel like crafting them, I don't, I'm not sure, uh, but assuming that he has two in his deck and hasn't used any yet, like, I need to be really careful.
there's there's one. Which one did he cast it on? I was actually surprised that he didn't cast it down here, but I guess this was a really buffed um, rejuvenator, so he wanted to deal with that. Oh, I see. It has been a while since I played this. It's been like two, maybe. Th it's been two days since I played this match, so I don't necessarily remember it super well. Yeah, our board state has just never been able to get solid. I mean, I think my best bet here is to go kill the Regalia. I think that's why he said oops, is because of the positioning. That's okay, but like none of this stuff really feels good to cast right now. No matter what, I need to cast a Rejuvenator. Um, and I got a good spell out of it. Chromatic Cold and Hailstone Prism are almost always going to give you good value. No, I think this was another mistake. Um, doing this because again, uh, holy immolation. If we assume he has it, um, kills everything, <laughs> and he still has 19 health, so it's not like he's going to be against attacking anything. However, yeah, because I just drew this right. If only I had that last turn, that that might have been decent. Pardon me, the hiccups. Now this is a nine mana combo. That's pretty good, but it's not it's not amazing, but it's okay. It's okay if you already have like good board control. But usually you want to use this on like an injured minion, like use it to hit something and then and then change it. And those dancing blades, they're really hard for the deck to deal with because you don't want to hellstone prism then. Prism them since their opening gambit is really powerful. Um but at the same time, you have to deal with them, and a 4-6 body is pretty hefty. Definitely pretty hefty. This message is probably actually from Coco Loco, because I just told him that it was really ironic that I was logging in to commentate this match, and then I saw him online. So, our hand is so spell-heavy right now. We don't necessarily need it. So this, I think, was incorrect. Let me pause for a second. What I think I should have done is attacked with the mini Jaxi to do the one damage to this or to attack with the Jaxi, I would have got a mini Jaxi. Then he could have walked up, hit him for three, and then transformed into the elemental, basically leveling his stats back out, making him, basically effectively giving him uh, three more stats. I think that would have been a lot better. And, it and I would have had a mini Jaxi. And it would have also saved me a chromatic cold, which could be useful for stuff later on. Um, this deck also, I only run one Jaxi True Sight. I see a lot of Vanar decks running two, um, two, sometimes a third, but very rarely. Um, also I see varying amounts of Keepers, but this deck, in my opinion, uh, granted again, I've only played six ladder games with it. I've played a lot of games in Sandbox against my other decks. Um, it feels like th the Keeper just giving you more minions is better, because it's kind of like a zoo style deck. Oh man, these Dancing Blades, though. The Regalias plus the Dancing Blades are just... Uh, I guess the Lion Honor, in my opinion, is super good, because all you have to do is fill it with cards that give you value. You know, Dancing Blades at instant value, Holy Immolations, instant value, Regalias, instant value. Um, I Ironcliff Golem is, is super solid. The only thing that really hits... Um, that really hits Lion Honor hard right now, of course, is... Uh, the new Night Star Assassin because it hits all of their like taunts. But if you run Dancing Blades, it doesn't hit. It usually doesn't hit the Adept because it's, it's almost always going to be a 4 3. It doesn't hit the Dancing Blades if you run it. It doesn't hit the Emerald Rejuvenators. If you premise fist um, some things, it won't hit it. It's, it's pretty good. This deck, I don't think, runs Keepers, actually. I, I shouldn't say that because I could be completely wrong, but I don't remember seeing any. Now, this is something I didn't even think about. So I was thinking that even though this is a spell, it's making, you know, creatures. 
So if they get silenced, they would just make them three threes, and it would get rid of the wall ability. But since they're actually made by a spell, right? If you Sunbloom, they get completely removed from the battlefield. That is something that I did not know. So I learned, I learned something this game. So here my plan was to uh, just put that back in his hand, even though it has airdrop, so it's going to come back, um, and just try to get some good minion value. The only issue is, again, uh, since I did give him an airdrop minion back in his hand, uh, and even if I didn't, he could move, so he can airdrop Holy Immolation now, which, again, like I said, like there's so much value to be had in a Lionar deck. Uh, and against a deck like this, its plan is to just keep playing like mid game stuff and eventually just not swarm you but just kind of outvalue the opponent over time um that is very very hard to do i'm discovering against lionar here As you can see, our decks are also running very low. Even though this game is technically close, it's never really felt, even even still at this point, it's never really felt like a close game. I didn't want to move the wolf because I didn't want his Dancing Blades to be able to kill that mini Jaxi, and I was just hoping he didn't have another Tempest. I was also kind of hoping that I would draw a uh, Razorback. A little bit of a spoiler, the Razorback actually ends up being um, very late. <laughs> I do run two. We've only seen one, but the other one doesn't show up for a very long time, uh, unfortunately. I mean, technically, right... In a perfect world, even if he killed the wolf or the fox. Is this a wolf or a fox? It's a wolf. Okay, I figured it was. I just want to make sure, since we have Aspect of the Fox as a spell. Um, in a perfect world, if he had stepped forward and only been able to kill the wolf this turn, and we had a Razorback, we would have Lethal, which is why the Jaxi is in here, because you can get so much damage out of it. But uh, sadly, that is not the case. So again, we're forced to put this back in his hand. I believe I end up using the uh, the crowd genesis to do the four damage to this. Yeah. Now again, I was really hoping that I was going to get a um, a better draw there, a razorback. I did not get a razorback. Still no Razorback. Only three cards left in the deck, too. So one of the reasons why I consider it a close game is because we had a chance, even with the Holy Immolations and with the Regalias and all that stuff, we had the potential of having Lethal right there. Um, sadly, we didn't. Ugh. All we needed was that Razorback. And he was so late to the party.
Crossbones, a cool little piece of tech. Um, definitely helps against Megazor. And I and at least uh, a couple days ago when I actually was having time to play, I was seeing Mechazor around, so it makes sense to me. Still no, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> also, not a spell I wanted. I should have walked over, in my opinion, and attacked this. Just to lower its health a little bit more. But I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, this one is going to shoot that. Oh. I don't know why I didn't shoot that. That makes no sense to me, why I didn't shoot this. Man. Not my best, uh, not my best ideas there. Um, Ha the Joker Ha, the guy that I did the original viewer battle against, pointed out that the mini, or er, that uh, the Jaxies, except for mini Jaxie, of course, because it's so small, that uh, Jaxie True Sight and regular Jaxie look a lot like um, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and even like Jaxie True Sight sounds like, you know, it could be a Jace the Mind Sculptor, or uh, like a Jace Planeswalker card, Jace True Sight. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. See, if I had killed this thing, I'm sure he has another minion he could have played, but that was such a big mistake looking back at this. I cannot believe that I did that. That is so bad that I didn't kill that minion, and now it has health. What was I thinking? Wow. That is such a huge mistake. Like, that is not okay. Now at this point, I realized I was pretty much screwed. I was hoping I'd get something real lucky here. And that wasn't horrible. I mean, it's a 4-4. I really hope I killed this. Okay, I did. Good. And I'm out of cards. Which is really bad. <laughs> because if he deals with what we have on the board, other than the Archon Spellbinder, we don't really have a lot to threaten him with. I also probably should have played this um, Razorback a little more aggressively since it's not like, as long as it's on the battlefield, we have plus two attack. So it really should have been somewhere over here, maybe like right here, to try and uh, give me a little more board control. This is, this is way too defensive. I have a lot of improving to do, which is one of the reasons why I'm surprised that uh, I got to Diamond. <laughs> Because I do feel like there's a lot I could do better. But that does encourage me um, sometimes when I'm having ladder anxiety. Um, especially now that I'm doing the show. Like, I get really stressed out. Oh, holy immolation. I get really stressed out sometimes laddering because I'm afraid that, like, if I, if I get stuck in silver for too long or if I only get to gold, you know, or heaven forbid I never get into gold one season, that people are going to be like, wow, why did I watch this guy? He's so bad. <laughs> that's, like, that's like a huge fear for me, so... I try my best. Now this gave me hope, but of course it didn't. It didn't matter in the end. Um, I really see if this Razorback was over here, it could have at least dealt with this minion. 
or done four damage to him. It wouldn't have killed him. We would have been one damage off, but at least it would have been a thing. So that's also very unfortunate. Wanted to try and give him uh, something more intimidating. And like this, I should have moved in closer. I mean, I am taking the damage, of course. Um, I end up trying to. This Jaxie, I really want to stay alive. Um, because I'm going to need that chip damage. Especially since I'm already taking damage from drawing cards and he can draw two more. Um, I mean, with what I have on the board, it's going to force him to have to react to me. But there is a chance that I could kill him next turn um, if he walked closer to me. If that if the mini Jaxie survives, um, or if he can't deal with the Archon Spellbinder, because Chromatic Cold um, does do damage to generals. So very rarely, because usually you use them during the game, but this can be used to get lethal sometimes. It's just not super common. But this game has suddenly gotten very close. But but again, like you know, I, I know I keep saying this, but like Lionar's main advantage is how much value they can get. So you can just see the value right now. He has a full hand and two cards left in deck, and I'm down to three. Um, and of course, a lot of that is going to be um, my opponent probably being more skilled than me. Um, I have no doubt. Uh, he's almost in diamond already this season. Um, and and I'm, you know, I don't think I'm anywhere near the best player. But, you know, Holy Immolation value, Regalia value, me not killing that 2-1, um, just, you know, the... Uh, also, Lore Master being able to get Holy Immolation back again. There was just a lot of things, uh, a lot of high value exchanges. And this pretty much seals the deal for him at this point, because I have no way to deal with this minion. I should kill this, definitely. But I didn't. Oh, I did kill it. And like, this should be shooting the Lion R. Because this minion, sure, it's a problem, but I'll deal with it later. At this point in the game, I should be shooting him. In my opinion. I could be wrong. That could be a mistake. Maybe that isn't correct, but I feel like I should have been doing that. Now right here, I'm looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm taking damage every turn, but I can still last one more solid turn without anything. Um, and we have a lot of big things on the board. Right, we got one big thing on the board, but I mean, we have a lot of stuff. A lot of things too, like, if I, I killed this, I killed this guy, and these didn't help. Like, these really should be over here right now, you know what I'm saying? I should have placed them like maybe like right here and right here, not where I did, that was incorrect. Now he's taking damage. And you know, I can make another mistake here, and that's going for this. Um, you know, because I really needed the damage. Um, and he will take four damage next turn if he doesn't find a way to heal. So we're looking okay. Um. I feel like I maybe should have hit this just in case, but I don't want this to die. Um, and if he did find a way to heal and this survived, which it wouldn't, but if anything survived, um, I would have a way to potentially do damage.
And then, then he heals. And that one health is going to seal the game for him. Because I have no way to get to him now. At all. And that's game over. So, I spend a, a little bit of time here just trying to figure out if there is any way possibly in the world that I can do damage to him. Um, which I can't, sadly. Um, I was like, maybe if this kills that, and then and then this could walk over. But, yeah. I mean, it was obvious to me, but I, it's just kind of when you get that denial when your opponent's down to one health, and you're about to die, and you're like, there has to be something. Some possible way. I don't know why I was moving. I was also typing to him during this game, so uh, it's not like I'm just being weird. But, uh, yeah. No, no me. There's no way to do damage. He wins. <laughs> and then I was finally like, okay. And I gave him the game. So Coco Loco, great match, very close, one to two health, amazing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I I surely did, even if it was a loss. I'll see you guys in the next video.